Hello everyone, I'm Darren from Beer Sweden here. We're, we made it. We're at the Great British Beer Festival. I'm just having a little bit of a um, pre-festival nutrition. It's very important, as everyone knows, that when you go to a beer festival, you shouldn't do it on an empty stomach. It's a bit like an Olympic event, really. Um, and now I've got the flip cam here. So you're going to see some very shaky, this is probably the steadiest this is going to be all day. Um, pretty shaky camera work over the next few hours. But I hope you'll excuse that while we um, while we get stuck into a few really interesting beers. Just going to do a little panny shot now so you can see where, what, I'm, what I'm looking at. Hang on a moment. Um, so I think it's about time to disappear down a rabbit hole, so I'll be back in a minute from inside. See you then. Are we on? Are we on? Okay chaps, here's the first beer of the day. Further away, that's better. The first beer of the day. You see it here. It's a uh, it's a De Moulin, uh, cherry and uh, um, raspberry crike. Uh, Five point six percent. Let's give it a go. Thought I'd start off with an odd one. Get a few odd ones under my belt to start off with. Some of the harder to find. Straight out of the cask. Lovely stuff. Very sour. Refreshing. Oh yeah. Um, a little bit medicinal, a bit sort of cough syrup, you know, like when you've got a sore throat. Um, but an interesting start. You know. Oh, Darren's already been shopping. Look, a couple of little hard to get American micro brews, which I'm going to be taking back to Sweden with me. That's a goodie, this one. Um, and I'll sample those on the blogs a little bit later on. Over and out. Set the ready! say that I have fallen in love with the mild style. Um, underrated, very unsexy, but um, here there's some amazing coffee, uh, red currant, blackberry types of milds um, that uh, are all around 3.7 to 4.4 percent and um, they are fantastic, incredibly drinkable. It's really, I think, epitomizes what the British do best, and that is produce incredibly intense flavors in very low ABV beers. Um, I just want to say, uh, in, the, in the Great British Beer Festival, and I've stumbled across two of the greatest, I would say, fans of beers. Is that right, guys? We're on, two, yes. two of the biggest, are we on? Yes, are we, we'll be on.
Let's have a, we are going to have a few beers together. Um, I think I don't know how many beers you guys have had, but uh, it's beginning to get to that point of the day where we should probably stop and go home and watch a film and go to bed early. But we're not going to do that, so we're going to carry on. We're doing it for all you people over there in Sweden. We're going to ruin our livers so that you don't have to. Um, but we'll be back a little bit later on with hopefully yet another great beer. Until then, guys, cheers and beers. Cheers and beers. Oh, all right, sitting on a bucket plant or something. See that? Anyway, um, we're six and a half hours into the show. Um, come outside for a bit of a breather. Um, thinking about, actually looking, you know, looking back on the last six hours, thinking about the best beers that I've had and the, all the stars that I've had. And, um, do you know, I'm pretty disappointed. I've not found anything that really floats my boat. Uh, the miles have been good, um, impressive for the ABV, but basically there's not been a single beer that I've tried or heard of that has been uh, a real game changer. And for that I'm disappointed, I have to say. Easy to go over to the American stands and try their triple, quadruple, whatever it is. And yes, they're good, and I bought a few, and I'll take them back with me. But that wasn't what I was after coming here. I was after some UK beers that really did cram a lot of flavour and a lot of character into a medium low ABV and to be honest with you I found a few pretenders but nothing that's really blown me away. Um, disappointing. Cheers and peace.